All right, folks, in today's video, we are compiling all of our blood tracking content into one resource. We want this to be at the top of everyone's mind as we head into the thick of it here throughout the Midwest and throughout the country as far as whitetail deer hunting goes. So we're going to have this time coded for liver shots, lung shots, heart shots, gut shots. So if you're interested in a specific topic, make sure you check that out in the description below and you can jump to that portion of the video. Otherwise, good luck this season. Hope you guys find some value in this content. We are here to help you out. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Now let's get into this video. Now, gut shots, to be clear, are 100% fatal. The deer is going to die. It cannot survive a gut shot. It just doesn't happen. Now, are you gonna recover that deer is the question. So you have a shot that's 100% fatal. Now the rest is up to you. And what you do first after a potential gut shot will determine if you find your deer or not. So let's talk about a few key things to look for right from the shot to help you determine if you got a gut shot, where it's at, and how long you should wait. So from the tree stand, after you've made a shot on a deer and you're suspecting it's a gut shot, you may have heard a hollow hitting sound, sound like maybe shot into a wet pillow. The deer will often hunch up. Oftentimes they'll walk away slowly, tail up, or maybe tail down flicking side to side. So you're looking for these signs. They don't usually just take off like a bullet and keep on trucking. They know something's wrong. They don't quite know what. So that's a good sign to look for right out of the gate. The next thing you need to determine is where did you hit that deer behind the diaphragm? So there's a lot of good stuff behind the diaphragm like the liver. You've got a few major arteries coming through there. Up top, you have an aorta going down the whole back. So you could luck out and hit any one of those, the hepatic artery. So there's some good things behind the diaphragm to hit. There's also a lot of garbage back there to hit as well. But again, not all gut shots are created equal. And what I mean is if you are up front close to the diaphragm, there's a section there broadside that you are clear from the actual guts and you're actually shooting stomach or paunch. In that area, you're must, much more likely to also get some liver involvement as well, which will help on your recovery. It'll certainly speed things up a little bit. When you have a uh, shot and you suspect that you may have a gut shot, you need to sit in your stand, relax as long as you can, be quiet, pay very close attention to the direction the deer went, try to follow it as far as you can by eyesight, and then listen, use your ears, listen for things breaking. They will often be staggering, sometimes not even following a trail. Uh, you hear oftentimes that they will head to water. My experience is right after a gut shot, they do not normally head right to water. That water comes several hours in as that deer starts to feel sick, may even start to have stomach type issues and that drives them towards the water source in some occasions. But right out of the gate, they can go any direction because it's a fight or flight situation for them. So after a bit, you can make yourself, uh, get yourself down out of the stand and approach your shot area and take a close look. What do you have for sign there? The best thing you can hope for is a pass through and you can examine your arrow. Now, as you move back in the deer, your arrow will look different the whole way back until you get all the way back. So from the diaphragm area, when you're looking at the liver and the paunch, if you get a paunch shot, you will often have a lot of bright color to that. There'll be some yellows, some greens. It'll smell sweet and sour to you. And it just looks very liquidy and it'll have a texture to it that may have some chunks. You may actually see some actual food particles in it. If they've been in the acorns, you might see some acorn particles. That will confirm that you have hit them in the paunch. Now, what difference does that make over the guts? The guts farther back there's a lot more surface area there, right? So all of the guts, the large intestine, small intestine, they're all curled up in there. So when you go through, you are hitting multiple guts as you go through. Each one of them has its own vascular association. So you have a higher chance of hitting some other veins as you go through, none of them major. And all of this is requiring time. So if you've determined you have a gut shot, if you're farther back, 
The air will often be slimy. It'll be a light brown to a dark brown, depending on how far back you get. If you get really far back, it'll just look like poo and it'll smell like it too. So it'll give you a good idea of where you're at. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you can read some things about saying, well, you don't have to wait this long for a paunch or this long for guts. I say that you need a minimum of 10, preferably 12 or more hours on a gut shot. The deer is going to die. What you do next is gonna be all about how you recover that deer. So fortunately for me, um, I get to help track a lot of deer and I love tracking deer. And what I have found is on gut shot deer, 80% of the time, if we have bumped them out of their bed, we either don't find them or it's really, really difficult. Sometimes a mile worth of difficulty or calling in the dogs or whatever we need to do to find that animal. So the, the thing you want to the most is to get out of your stand quiet. Approach your shot area quiet. Look for your sign quiet. If you've determined a gut shot, go home. If you're on a remote hunt, go to your tent, go to your hotel, go do something else and give that deer 12 hours. Cause here's what's happened, this is what will happen if you don't. You're gonna go in, you're gonna bump that deer out of their bed and all of a sudden the adrenaline kicks in and they are off like a shot, going who knows where because oftentimes you are not going to get a very good blood trail to follow. There's not all that much vascular there. And really what you're tracking the most in a lot of that area is the blood that's coming just from the direct muscle tissues from the side of the animal. You're not getting any blood coming from the guts. Now you may get some depending on where you were in there. And certainly if you had some liver involvement, you'll see some dark red blood, but you can't depend on that. So it is best for you and the recovery of that animal to get out and stay out. And it's the hardest thing to do. We've all screwed up, especially on some monster that you know, you've, you've spent all this time getting him to that last 20 yards and here's your moment of truth and, and you got nervous and you messed up, which happens. But you can still recover that deer if you have some patience, take your time, go in slow, be ready for a follow-up shot even after 10 or 12 hours and hopefully you will find your deer. But let's back up real quick and talk about the anatomy of the whitetail just briefly and where the liver sits and how it's positioned. And it'll give you a good idea uh, between that and how the whitetail reacts to did you get a liver shot? The first thing we wanna talk about is where does the liver sit? So the liver is really tucked in tight between three different things. So you have the stomach and the gut area here. The liver rides up against that. And then you have the diaphragm and then you have the lungs. So you kind of have that liver sandwiched in there and the liver isn't an organ that lays long ways through the deer cavity, okay? So the liver is almost perpendicular. Now, if you can think of it as maybe a little bit of an L shape or a cup shape to where, um, you know, it's wrapped around the stomach and gut area a little bit and so part of it is straight while the other kind of curves around a little bit. But it is a narrow um, organ if you want to think of it that way when you are considering the whole deer cavity. Now, another important factor here is that there's more cavities than one in a deer, right? We have the front thoracic cavity and after the diaphragm, we have another cavity and that's where the liver sits. So the liver is not a giant target and often when you get a shot that's a little far back, you are going to clip the lungs as well as get the liver or clip some stomach or intestines as well as get the liver. So it's kind of an area where you can get a little bit of everything and it can be hard to discern, did I get a liver shot? So some of the things you need to consider when you're asking yourself, did I hit the liver is, where did the shot hit? Did you feel that it was off? Did you have a lighted knock? Were you able to kind of see that it was far back? Uh, how did the deer react? Oftentimes, when you get a deer that is hit uh, south of the diaphragm, if you will, they will hunch up. They will hunch over. Uh, they will react that way uh, where they're just kind of, you know, given a little bit of a scrunchy, strange motion. It's, uh, sometimes they will kick. Uh, and so you just got to kind of think, well, maybe that's another uh, discerning factor that I hit the liver. Uh, the other is tail flicking. If your deer is going away and you're seeing that tail and it's flicking a lot, like really nervously flicking, that's a good sign that you have shot behind the diaphragm and could potentially hit liver. The next thing that you can look for, which is a lot more discerning, is of course the 
the site of impact. Uh, oftentimes, liver shots are pass-through shots. There's not a lot of stuff besides a couple ribs that are blocking your shot, so you have a good chance of getting a pass-through with the correct setup and correct broadhead. But look at the area that you've shot. What is the blood like? Can you find your arrow, and what does it lo look like? Now, the differences between a lung shot and a liver shot is, with a lung shot, you often have a lot of bright, pink, frothy blood. But when you look at liver blood, it is often darker, a maroon color, and can even be watery. If you start that track job on your uh, potential liver shot deer, often what you'll see is a lot of blood up front. And when you get to that 20 or 30 yard mark, you start to see a lot of blood instantly gone and you're following trickles. And at that time, you can also see that that blood becomes a lot more watery, it gets clearer. It's because you're dealing with a filter organ. And as that blood is pushed through the different capillaries and other minor vessels and veins, you're getting a lot of serous fluid, a lot of white blood cells, and it tends to start to water out that blood little bit. But at the beginning of the track job, you have to make a big decision. And this is the most critical part when you are tracking a potential liver hit deer, is this first decision you're going to make. And that is, am I going to back out or not? So first thing to think about is liver shots are fatal. They're definitely fatal. But the liver being an organ, is designed in such a way that it has several structures within itself that will determine how fast that fatality occurs. So if you consider there's two major vessels, one going in and one coming out of the liver and all kinds of other vascular associations with the liver, the deer is going to die, but if you have hit the hepatic artery, that deer is going to die fast. It really is. You're going to see pretty good blood. The, the thoracic cavity may contain or pull a lot of that blood, so it may not be bleeding out of the white tail, but they are going to bleed quickly and they are going to die quickly. Now, making that decision at that point is the tough part because you're gonna have to look at that and say, okay, I have a ton of blood. Like, I, think of it in water bottle terms, okay? If you, the average liver contains almost a full average size water bottle of blood. If you have a bunch of water bottles of blood, two water bottles, you will probably have hit the hepatic artery and you're probably pretty safe. But if you are just seeing maybe a cup or two of blood and then it starts to trickle, you have got to give up the chase. And this is the key thing when it comes to liver hits. A liver hit that is not quickly fatal, meaning you didn't hit the hepatic artery or any of the major vessels, that deer can go a couple hundred yards. It is going to die, but it is going to walk off. And if you have been quiet in your stand, if you have been quiet in your blind and just kind of stayed put and watched, he's often not gonna feel like, you know, something's pursuing me, I'm not in trouble, I'm gonna go lay down. And that is what you want to do. The problem is, is we get excited as hunters and we start trailing these animals right away, even when we think we have a liver shot and we kick that deer out of the bed. Now all of a sudden it's adrenaline time for that deer. Okay, we have kicked into a whole new mode. We're no longer relaxed and we are taking off. And who knows where we're going from that point. That deer could go anywhere, usually a long distance. But the issue is at that point, usually you have diminished the blood loss. And so tracking has now become the become a huge problem. So when we're talking about you know this whole liver situation, you'll see an array of times as you read and watch different things on the internet about how long should I really wait. And if you have determined that you have a ton of blood and you feel confident and as you got to that 20 or 30 yard mark, there's still a ton of blood, you're probably okay to start your track job slowly, paying attention, looking ahead, being as quiet as possible. But if you've seen the diminished blood, watery blood, and you are a little bit nervous, go home. <laughs> so that's the easiest way for me to put it. You really should be giving that deer at that time six to eight hours. And I know that's extensive, but as you are running the risk of kicking that deer up and losing it, it is best just to do what you can to wait it out. And some people will say 20 minutes, an hour, three hours, four hours. If you're waiting three hours, why not wait three more? What is the difference besides your nervousness and your excitement? Get more excited about the track job. And remember, 
after you've given yourself that time, you have given yourself the best chance that if you do have a liver hit that is fatal, you are going to recover that deer. Now remember, whenever you're tracking a whitetail, no matter where it's hit, but especially when you are hitting behind the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity anywhere, you wanna make sure that you have your bow at the ready and that you're ready for a shot because you may come up on that deer bedded and they are weak enough that they're going to give you another shot opportunity, but they're also strong enough that the closer you get, they're gonna jump and run. So you wanna be prepared for a follow up shot if possible, if that's what the situation dictates. So make sure that you have your archery equipment at the ready during the uh, liver tracking job. Not all lung shots are created equal. And what I mean by that is, is you can have a good double lung hit, but that double lung hit could be high and you'll get a different result. It could be in the middle and you'll get a different result and it could be low and you'll get a different result. You could get a single lung shot and you're gonna have a totally result than any of those three. So when I say not all lung shots are created equal, what I'm trying to say is you cannot depend on just saying lung shots and then have a standard answer to how you're supposed to know and how you're supposed to track. You kind of have to look at them all individually. So the first thing that I advise is when you're in the tree stand and you've made that shot, the first thing you wanna do is look. Look at the deer, how did they act? On a lung shot, they're typically gonna get up and go right away. They're gonna take off on you. And how did your arrow flight seem? Did you get, do you have a lighted knock? Were you able to see where it went? Do you feel confident in your shot? Were you in that zone of getting lungs? And as you determine that, was the deer broadside? Was it quartering two? Was it quartering away? Was it a hard quartering shot? These are things you have to think about when it comes to your follow-up after a lung shot. And the reason is, is because again, not all lung shots are created equal. If you get a good double lung shot, you are probably gonna find that deer very close. They're not going to go far. If you get a single lung shot, now all of a sudden you're talking about potentially having a tracking job. The deer is going to die, but it's going to go a lot farther. Another thing to consider, and this is on any shot, is also during the rut. Bucks behave differently. Doesn't matter if it's a lung shot or another shot, you could hit one very well in the lungs and it's going right back to its adrenaline filled rut crazed activity and it's gonna continue chasing does and doing its thing. So you may get a little bit more distance out of a shot like that where the buck has gone a long way just based on adrenaline and activity. So you have to take all that into consideration. When you have made your shot and you're confident that you are in the lung area, it's probably a great idea to just sit back and wait 30 minutes or so in the stand. Keep a mental image of where that deer ran. Listen, did you hear anything? Did you hear crashing? Did you hear brush breaking? Did you see any trees moving down below? Kind of get a great idea of where that deer has gone and mark mentally that direction. When you do get out of the stand, the first thing you wanna do is investigate that shot area. What kind of blood do you have? Is your arrow there? What does it look like? So for lung blood, we're often looking at a bright, frothy blood. Frothy is the key here. There is a difference between froth and bubbles. And the importance of that is, if you have a shoulder shot and you've greatly injured either the facing offside shoulder, it doesn't matter. If you've injured that shoulder, as that deer is running, he's sucking air into that wound. And as he goes, that blood is getting bubbly. And as it falls to the ground, it can maintain those bubbles. So you may be on a tracking job where you've gone a long way and you're encouraged because you're seeing all these bubbles and it's not frothy lung blood, it's just bubbles. So you wanna really be cautious of those situations that you're not pushing a deer that needs a longer time because you're assuming it's a lung shot. So it's always best to err on the side of caution. Now, also another thing to consider is when you are looking at the blood trail itself. Now, we get calls weekly about people wanting to switch their broadhead because they want a broadhead that creates a better blood trail. Look, <laughs> if you shoot a deer high in the lungs and that blood has not had a chance 
to pull up to those holes and come out, you are not going to get a great blood trail. You're going to get whatever makes it there, whatever capillaries and veins are on the outside that are bleeding. You may not see a whole lot if that blood isn't able to get up there. If you've deflated both lungs, there's nothing to even help pressurize and get that blood to come up to those high holes. Now your deer's dead, but you're having a poor blood trail and you may lose hope when you don't need to. Now when you get down to the middle portion of the lungs, and especially on an angled shot, you could see a lot more blood because that second hole you got a nice angle, the blood hasn't have to pull up very high, and you're seeing a lot more sign on the ground. Very encouraging. Now the lung blood doesn't have to be frothy either. It can just be a nice bright blood and plenty of it. There's so much vascular area in there that lung shots are just a high success, great finding shot. You shouldn't have any trouble, but take your time. Don't be in a hurry. If you suspect on a quartering shot that you've only got one lung, go ahead and back out. Take your time, and when you do finally start to track, go slow. Look at the signs. How much blood? Did you find a bed? Should you back out again? Take those things into consideration. The last thing you want to do is bump that deer and have to continue tracking as they go further and on adrenaline trying to get away from whatever is chasing them. Could get into an area that it's harder to track them, to find them, could be less blood, could be private property. Now you got all these other hassles to deal with. So it's best just to go slow, back out, take your time. But when it comes to a lung hit, those are great shots. They should be easy tracking job. Oftentimes on a good double lung, you're going to see that deer drop from the tree stand and there's no better sign than that. What's the big deal about tracking after a hard shot? Well, generally there's nothing that's a big deal after it. It's usually pretty awesome. But there are some circumstances for you to help determine if it is a hard shot and how long you should wait. And a lot of times in this industry, you know, we're catering uh, our videos to new hunters, um, novices, as well as somebody with a lot of experience that just may have some questions. So for this video, we're going to talk about some anatomy. We're going to talk about the details of the heart, how impact uh, in those areas will differentiate between what you may do after the shot. So let's talk first a little bit about the deer heart and the anatomy. Uh, first of all, a deer heart is not all that big, really. It's just uh, about the size of an ill-formed grapefruit, if you want, maybe even a little smaller. Uh, the apex of the heart actually tilts down towards the belly of the animal and faces towards the rear of the animal. The apex is the very bottom or pointy part of the heart. So the top portion of the heart with all the big vascular association is actually at an upwards angle inside the cavity. The heart is also nestled between the lungs. So oftentimes when you get a heart shot, you're involving lungs as well. That combination is usually awesome for a really short track job. A direct heart shot in the upper portions of the heart or through the center usually will result in a really fast track job. Sometimes only 15 yards, 30 but sometimes things just are wonky and that deer may go 100, 150 or even more yards, especially if that shot is way down at the base of the heart. It is possible to hit a portion of the heart, especially at the apex where you don't have any involvement of the chambers or of the valves or anything that's really all that important. Thankfully, there's vascular association around all the heart and usually plenty of lung in that area as well. But it's possible on an angled shot or maybe even some crazy steep shot where you've come in really, really low and just the tip of that heart is all that's exposed and that's all you get. And that could certainly result in a longer tracking job. So even when you're sure that you've had a heart shot, it is still best to sit in your stand, wait and watch and see what's happening with that animal. Best case scenario is you've watched him drop and you're celebrating from the stand. But if he has done that mule kick and taken off like a bolt of lightning and crashing through the woods, then you have a good opportunity to find that deer, of course, but you should examine the scene. First, look at your arrow. Did you get a pass through? What does the blood look like? Is it a nice bright red blood? Does it maybe have some lung froth on it as well? How much blood is left at the scene? Do you have a really solid blood trail? Does it peter out right away or is it solid the entire way? 
if you get the upper portions of the heart where you have the aortic arch, the pulmonary artery, the veins, everything going in and out of the top of the heart, it is lights out. I mean, that deer should not go far at all. Now, depending on your broadhead and your uh, angle of entry and exit, you may not get a ton of blood. Everybody thinks that I should have a ton of blood based on my broadhead, but there's a lot of things that happen. If you have an angled shot, and as that deer is running, that layer of skin over top of the ribs, if it's moving, it can close that hole up a little bit. So you may only see blood on a stride or a jump. You may see tons of blood depending on your broadhead. You may have a trail that you could follow in the dark without any flashlight and that would be great. But sometimes that's just not the case and you still have a heart shot. So again, take your time, examine the scene. If you feel that you did have a heart shot, slowly walk in the woods following the blood trail and always be prepared for a follow-up shot because you just never know and it's good to be prepared so if you're confident of your heart shot based on the deer's reaction how the arrow looks how the scene looks just make sure you've taken your time going in be ready for a follow-up shot and good luck recovering your deer